News headlines frequently report economic conditions, but many citizens find the information confusing. This chapter introduces the basic language of macroeconomics and national income accounting. In part one, we will be calculating how economists estimate a country's output and income for a year. The importance of these figures will be discussed as well as the difference between the various ways that we can measure income. In part two, we will discuss how we can adjust the figures that we have calculated for inflation effects and analyze some of the issues associated with the various accounts. National income accounting does for the economy what private accounting would do for an individual household or business. The Bureau of Economic Analysis, an agency of the Department of Commerce, compiles the data and reports it in national income accounting and product accounts. This information is used by economists and policymakers in formulating decisions for the best interest of the nation. The primary measure of the economy's performance as a whole is its aggregate output. This is most commonly calculated as gross domestic product, or GDP. GDP is a monetary measure in that everything is valued in dollars. All goods and services produced must be converted into do dollar values for GDP to work. To avoid multiple counting of goods, GDP includes only the market value of final goods and ignores intermediate goods, which are goods either purchased for resale or for further processing into final goods. GDP could also avoid multiple counting by counting only the value added at each stage. Value added is the market value of a firm's output less the value of the inputs that the firm purchased from others. This table illustrates the value added in a five-stage production process. The value added is calculated as the difference between the sales value of the materials and the value of the good at the previous production stage value. Using this method will avoid multiple counting. Firm A creates $120 worth of wool on its sheep ranch and sells it to the wool producer. From there, the wool producer adds $60 to its value by processing the wool into cloth that can be used for clothing and sells it to the coat manufacturer for $180. If we continue to follow the process, we will eventually reach the final good which the retail store sells for $350 to the consumer. Had we counted every step as a part of GDP, it would have added $1,140 to GDP instead of the correct value of $350. Non-production transactions must be excluded from GDP as well, since they have nothing to do with the production of final goods. There are two types, purely financial transactions and secondhand sales. Purely financial transactions include such items as public transfer payments like Social Security, private transfer payments like money in a birthday card, and stock market transactions. None of these are counted in GDP. Secondhand sales contribute nothing to current production, so they're ignored in calculating GDP.